Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's video lecture, Learning Kismet. Kismet is UDK's visual scripting system, and it allows for you to include interactivity in your levels without actually having to learn a programming language. I'm going to walk you through a small Kismet script that toggles a light switch on and off inside one of our buildings. The goal of this is to teach you the fundamentals, the very basics of how Kismet works, how nodes and connections work, so that you have an understanding and can explore more deeply the different actions and logic involved. To start, let's go ahead and pick our building here that has uh, the lights already in it. So this is the one that we put a light in, and if you put it in all of yours, that's great. Just choose one that you'd like to include this in, or all three. Now basically what we're going to do is, we're going to take this light bulb, this light source here, and we're going to make it toggleable, so that when you, the player, walks by a trigger source, in this case it's going to be a control panel, the light will turn off and if you walk by it again it'll turn on. So the first thing here is we're going to open our Kismet window. To do that let's navigate up here to this K and it says open Unreal Kismet. And this is what a Kismet sequence window looks like. There are three main windows here. The top one, which you're going to be doing most of your work in, this is where the nodes and paths will be created. The properties window down here lists the properties and specific options for each node that you'll select. And sequences will allow you to create different Kismet pieces and then link them together if you desire. So before we begin building our actual toggle switch, let's just go ahead and play around in Kismet for a second to familiarize ourselves with it. Now in, in the main window here, anytime you want to create something, you're going to use a context window. So go ahead and right click and you can see that we have a bunch of different options including new action, new matinee, condition, variable, event, comments, and so on and so forth. Now if, you're, if you've ever done any kind of programming before then you know that there's a, a sequence of logic that usually dictates how things work and Kismet is no different than that. Kismet is event and action driven meaning it uses events, actions, and then conditions and variables within those events and actions to dictate how things are played and what happens. The two that we'll be concerned with here are events and actions. An event is basically anytime something happens. In our case, it's going to be whenever we run through a trigger. Actions, on the other hand, are things that we will make happen, usually in response to an event. Again, in our light switch sequence, that means we're going to use a toggle action to turn our light bulb on and off. So let's go ahead and scroll over new event. We can see this gives us all the different events that we can create in Kismet and all of the different submenus for each one. Okay, for example, this event, new event player player spawned, happens when a new player is spawned, usually probably after death or in some other instance. Another good example is level loaded. This means when as soon as the level is loaded, it will play these actions following this event. So let's go over to actions here, and we can say we can see we have even more. I'll pick a couple here to go through, and since we're going to be using toggle, let's explain this. Toggle basically means to switch a boolean on and off, and what we're going to be using specifically is just the basic toggle. But we have other ones here. For example, toggling hidden objects, toggling God mode on and off. Another one would be sound. So if we have an event, let's say player runs into this object we can use the sound action to play a sound you know so if it's if he's running into water we can play a, a water splash sound so moving along let's go ahead and start our kismet sequence the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a trigger for our player to run into to do that let's go ahead and right click in our level and we're going to add actor trigger now triggers are basically invisible objects that players can interact with and we're going to use it in conjunction with a static mesh. So let's bring that into level as well. Let's open up our content browser, go to static meshes, and we're going to choose deco. Let's scroll down here and find something that we can use for a control panel. Uh, this one looks great. It's called deco SM storage tanks 07. Let's go ahead and select that and bring it into our level.
and then we can minimize our content browser and let's place our control panel inside of our house here and we're going to put it on this wall so I'm going to rotate it we're going to put it towards the beginning now let's take our trigger and sync it into the side of our control panel here now this basically means whenever the player runs into this trigger it's going to something's going to happen and we want to put it right over our control panel so that it looks like when you run into the control panel something actually happens so that looks pretty good okay go ahead and open kismet back up now since we have our trigger selected we can go ahead and right click and we're going to choose new event using trigger zero which basically sets up our event with a target already locked and that's what we want is our trigger we have a couple options here and we want to just touch it now we've created our very first node and you can see if you click on it you can drag it around inside your uh, sequence or your main window here now basically like I said before Kismet's made up of nodes and connections and the idea is we're going to have these nodes which represent events actions and so on and then we connect them using lines and this flow of lines from node to node emulates the flow of logic so we have our trigger here and it's set to touch so whenever we touch it something's going to happen so the next thing we need is an action so let's go ahead and right click and we're going to choose new action now we want toggle since we're going to be toggling the light on and off so let's go down here and just choose the basic toggle and again we've created another node this is a toggle node and this is our trigger event now you can see they have these little boxes here that light up these are where you can put inputs and outputs of the lines so if we were to drag something here you can see that it creates a line now basically what this means is when we touch this so I'm using the touch little uh, input node here or output we can connect it to one of these options so these are the inputs for toggle and we can turn it on we can turn it off or we can toggle it so let's go ahead and we're going to choose toggle and you can see when you click it that it creates this little arrow now if we wanted to get rid of it just alt click to break the connection and you can also just click on any node and hit delete on your keyboard to delete it so let's go ahead and connect these when we touch our event trigger we want to toggle something right now this doesn't know this is we have not assigned anything to this toggle so it doesn't know what it's doing yet uh, and therefore we need to find something to attach to it that something's going to be our light bulb so let's hop back into our kismet window or out of our kismet window I should say and we're going to select our light here now down here at the bottom this is a point light you can see it's persistent level point light zero there are different kinds of lights which we didn't really cover the different kinds except uh, very briefly and so this is where I want to explain point lights have point light which is a static this is what this is right now they have point light movable which can be moved around and continually update dynamically or they have point light toggle which is what we want we want to turn it on and off so let's go ahead and right click our light and we want to convert it so this convert light command right here we want to convert it to a point light again we don't want to change that but we do want to change it to a point light toggleable and you can see now if we zoom in it has a little light bulb chain here that shows that it's a toggleable light and it's ready to be used in our kismet so let's open our kismet window back up now we need a target or a variable for this toggle and there are two ways of doing it we could right click and choose new variable object 
and then assign something to it by going in here and choosing the object. But an easier way, so let's go ahead and delete this, an easier way is once you have your object, your target selected in the editor, go ahead and right click the target node button here and just choose new object variable using point light toggleable zero. That auto assigns it right to that target. So now we have a touch trigger that should toggle a light on and off. So let's go ahead and test our uh, new script. So here's our control panel. We run into it. We should see the light turn off. And there it goes. However, we can see that it's not turning back on. So that's something we're going to have to change in the properties. Let's head back to Kismet. And we want the trigger zero touch. Now when you click on one of these nodes, you can see that in the properties window, just like if you hit F4 on some, uh, a static mesh, for example, or a light, uh, it brings up a bunch of properties. Now the thing we want is the max trigger count found under the sequence event. Now basically this, if you hover over it, says how many times this event can be activated, zero for infinite. Now since it's just a toggle, we just want it on and off, we're going to go ahead and set that to zero because it doesn't matter how many times the player turns the light bulb on and off. So now let's go ahead and test this. There it goes off, and there it goes on. So there's your very first Kismet script, only using two nodes and one object and two connections. Now a quick tip for when you're working in Kismet is uh, how to test things really easily. And what I found is using the action voice and announcements, play announcement, is really simple and useful for whether or not for finding out whether or not the events are sending the correct signal. So if we were to connect our touch trigger, let's go ahead and break this by holding Alt and clicking on it. If we were to bring our touch trigger over to the play announcement in, and then we click on play announcement, we can have it set to say something. Uh, so let's do just a text. This is kind of like a debug. So we can say, yay, it works. So now, if our trigger touches and it's working correctly, we'll see an announcement that says, yay, it works. So let's go ahead and close that and test that. Now, we already know it works, but this is just a great example of something. You can see how it displays there. So instead of trying to figure out something that has multiple variables to it and uh, different things that can go wrong, I usually just try it first with the add announcement action to test.